Forget about the hammer, forget about coaching and player turnover, NIL could spell defeat for the reigning national champions, the Michigan Wolverines. Welcome to the Point a Minute show on Michigan football, the voice of college football, where we average one outstanding point for every minute of video. My name is Cliff, with me as always is Mac. Mac, it's no secret Michigan is struggling with NIL, but they have made uh, some progress lately. They've hired Teresa Whitehead uh, as executive general manager of NIL. They now have a deal with Valiant Management Group to coordinate NIL deals. But there's a problem on the horizon, it looks like. Nate Marshall, uh, a Michigan recruit for the 25 season, until now it seemed like he was a lock to play for Michigan. But then he gets a call from Auburn, and now his commitment is in question. The significance here is that Marshall has been committed to Michigan since April of this year, and he's the very first recruit of head coach Sharon Moore. So, Mac, first off, what's going on with Nate Marshall and Auburn? Well, I think it's the classic case of getting a good old recruiting talk from uh, noted recruiter Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Show me yeah. the money. Show me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say that I think, I think Auburn probably started dropping some bags or something like that, but it actually turns out that Nate Marshall has a um, prior relationship with one of the coaches down there. Um, they're both from Chicago. What was his name again? Vontrell King Williams. He's the defensive tackles coach uh, down there at Auburn. So uh, Nate Marshall has already built a relationship with King Williams, which I think that's, that's a really cool name. It's King hyphen Williams, man. That's awesome. Nice. Um, which is probably why Auburn is now a little bit more on his radar. Whereas before, obviously he had done a hard commit to Michigan. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a little problematic, isn't it? I mean, we can't be losing recruits that have, I mean, already committed Michigan recruiting right now to this point has not seen the national championship bump that we would have expected. Um, and frankly, we're all, I think a little bit frustrated by, so the Nate Marshall situation I think is indicative of a larger problem at Michigan with NIL and how Michigan really hasn't gotten with the times. And I can't remember who it was that said adapt or die. Um, but yeah, adapt or die. And I, I say all of that understanding that I've I've also said before that Michigan needs to look for the right players, not the best players. We've said that a lot on this show. But at the same time, they need to be willing to go toe to toe with the other players in the market to make sure that they're presenting the players with the fair market value, um, giving the players, you know, what what they're worth. Um if, if they honestly, if they don't, then they uh, will be in trouble of falling behind. And so far, that's been the case. Um, but it sounds like things are kind of changing with this new relationship with uh, Endeavor Media. I don't know if you wanted to get to that next. Well, I we can talk about that, too. I What I was wondering about, and I saw this on X today, uh, someone pointed out that these recruits now are looking at schools more like you would look at a job than you would look at, you know, playing for your favorite team. So let's say uh, in this case, we're talking about Michigan and Auburn. Um, let's say Michigan offers them, you know, this pay and this benefit and Auburn offers them this pay plus and this benefit plus. I mean, it makes sense that you'd take the job at Auburn, right? Is that is that basically what you see as what recruits are looking at now? Or what do you think of that? I mean, that seems to be the case. I, From what I understand with a lot of coaches, with what a lot of coaches around the nation are saying about NIL is that they're getting frustrated with the players coming out of high school. The first thing that they're asking is how much can I get in NIL? I can understand why that would be frustrating. You want players to come play for your team. That's the difference between college athletics and professional athletics. At least that's what it, it was, was supposed to yeah. be. It was supposed to yeah. be that way. Um I've got two different schools of thought on it because obviously what I just laid out is the reason why Nick Saban left the game. And that sucks. Like the, the best college football coach of all time has left the sport because of what it's turning into. Mm -hmm. At the same time, these players generate billions of dollars in revenue for the schools, for the television networks, for the conferences as a capitalist, <laughs> you got to pay them. It's a violent sport. Yeah. And if I were in this situation where it, 
if I were in the situation where one school was offering me a million dollars and another school said, well, that's cute. We'll offer you $2 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand why one would have a difficult time deciding between the two. I wonder if at some point the contract becomes so big that the monetary figure doesn't matter and you kind of just have your pick. And I'm, I'm saying that as someone who is well aware that even a hundred thousand dollars would be life changing <laughs> to a point. <laughs> so I'm not sure if the NIL deal got to a point where like Michigan was offering five million and Auburn was offering seven million. I mean, at that point, does two million dollars really matter that much? I don't know. I guess it depends on what kind of house you're looking at in the Hamptons, but you know, I don't know. It, it, it it's got to be a different setup you know, then say even like the NFL, even though they're paid now, it's, it's a different setup than the NFL because there's more options. There's fewer options in the NFL. So you can offer that and say, you know, we, we see it. Our, our hometown team is the Detroit lions. And if you were offered the same amount of money, well, no, let me take that back. The lions have paid Buku bucks for top players and are still one of the only two original uh, NFL teams that doesn't have a super bowl win. So, you can pay these guys. So I, well, I guess, so I'd be interested to find out how this is going to play out in college because from year to year, it's, it's a fairly big toss up as to who's going to win the national championship. It's maybe a little clearer in the NFL. I don't know. Is that, does that make sense that uh, with those fewer options, more, well, fewer options in the NFL, more options in college that you're looking at is, (laughs) let me rephrase that is promising somebody a million dollars plus a shot at the championship realistic for most of the teams in college football? Well, no. And I I think that's what made um, the one running back. I can't remember his name. The running back Michigan lost to Kentucky. I think that's what made that situation so head scratching was, I mean, it's Kentucky. What, what championship are you going to win at Kentucky? They're they're not even really going to come close to their conference championship, are they? I mean, Georgia's still really good. Tennessee's, eh, you know, Ole Miss seems to be on the rise. What does this kid think he's doing? And maybe for him, it really did just come down to the relationship with the running backs coach and the bag they dropped in front of him. I don't know. I, Texas recruiting, I'm really interested to see what happens because they literally put Lambos in front of these kids. Yeah, I saw that. Is that going to lead to anything? If it does, what what is the quality of the player that you're going to get? I mean, are they high character kids that are just really excited to to get a Lambo and and it doesn't mean anything, or or right. are you bringing in kids who are more excited about their paychecks than they are about the team? And maybe that's just going to have to be okay too. I at some point, you know, with professional football, we like to think that the players are playing for the team but they still have to put food on the table. Although I I shouldn't make that analogy because I think a million dollars is enough to put food on the table, but it's, it's the market is as the market is, you know, Mm -hmm. the money, the money, the kids get paid what they're worth because that's what the market dictates. That's what the NFL market dictates. That's why money is such a big deal there. If if money weren't a big deal, then it would be a completely different product. Right. One last question. When a recruit decommits, is there any fear or has this happened before where one recruit decommits and then you have this wave of decommitments from a team? Do they, will, if, if Nate Marshall decommits from Michigan after being committed since April. Do you think that'll lead to multiple players decommitting? No, not necessarily. Um, I don't know if he's got a relationship with a lot of the other recruits. uh, So I don't know what that looks like specifically, but I I think from, uh, I guess, just an overall strategy standpoint, if I'm Michigan, I'm looking at Nate Marshall and I'm just frustrated that NIL seems to be something that's keeping this kid even looking at other schools. That's what it seems to, that's what I would guess it, it probably is anyway. I mean, he does have the relationship with that coach there. That's fine. But let's be honest, if Michigan dropped a big enough bag, he'd probably stay with Michigan. Um, 
if anything, I think that would be why Michigan saw a wave of decommitments, but I don't think Michigan's going to see a wave of decommitments because they've barely gotten anybody to commit as it is for that same reason. You can't so. decommit if you haven't committed in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, that's what we think. What do you think? Leave a comment and let us know. Uh, if you want more great football analysis, check out all the shows right here on Michigan Football at the Voice of College Football. You can also catch Mac and I live on the Big Ten Team Rivalry Show Monday nights at 8 p.m. right here on YouTube. Mac, take us out. This is the Point a Minute show on the Michigan Football at the Voice of College Football show. Joe. Joe. <laughs>